Welcome back to my garage. Last time we made an attempt at making a sliding surface for the rotary valve, for the cover out of cast iron from this uh, frying pan. And, uh, and we discovered how much tension there is in a frying pan. And uh, so we failed. We should have, as people have suggested, we should have machined, uh, like flipped this several times and machined a little from each surface before we released it from the plate. Anyways. I kind of had a revelation uh, this weekend, I think. We're not gonna try the, I don't think it's needed. With the carbon fiber valve, this is needed, the hard sliding surface. With the steel valve, I think this uh, really hard aluminum alloy, it's uh, Sartal, that's the brand name. It's really hard, I, this should be sufficient. And probably softer alloys too is used in, uh, are used in um, in production production rotary valve um, engines. This this can't be the problem. I think the heat problem is the seal. I'm gonna delete that seal and uh, make a blanking plate, and then we're gonna use uh, this thing on the other side of the crank and have that as the ignition trigger. Because the only reason for the axle protruding out of the cover is because I have the because this doubles as an ignition trigger, this is the rotary valve driver. We can delete that seal and get less friction. And I think friction is much more important in a small engine like this. So this is the revelation. There's so little torque from 50cc. And the only way to make power from that small of a cylinder capacity is to spin it really fast. But the torque is still small. So just small torque at high RPM. Say there's 10 newton meters of, uh, of torque. And you probably can't get much more than maybe 11, 12, but say 10. All these small things, the friction from that seal, some friction in the bearings, friction from my belt primary. Several people have suggested I have to go to a um, chain primary. But this is just a test bench. But anyways, friction is destroying the torque and uh, there's not like 10 Newton meters, it's not much. And uh, with, a, with a cover that's not centered and uh, some run out in the driver and uh, I, it might be that this seal has largely contributed to the engine not revving properly and and all that heat and uh, I think like friction is something I uh, I was it's kind of a thing where we can improve upon friction later on but I think it's like friction in such a small engine is imperative it's crucial to get friction as low as possible to get any power at all because it there's so little torque and it's easy to to eat into that little torque say your engine is producing 20 newton meters of torque and then all the friction eats away five well just you're left with 15 if you have 10 well you're left with five like half the power so um i'm not saying the seal is eating five newton meters but it, it might be and that belt drive and uh, and all that stuff we're gonna make that blanking plate and we're gonna glue it to this cover and then we're gonna true up the, this surface just to be sure that it's uh, parallel to the rotation parallel to the rotation rotation action axis and um, and same thing with this just check that it's flat and true Oh. 
It's really obvious how non-flat this surface is, because it was only touching here, here and here. I'll start lowering by 0.1 millimeter at a time until we touch the whole surface. The whole surface was touched, so we're good to go. There's just a tiny area that's been touched. Well, actually two tiny areas. We'll lower it by 0.1 millimeters again and, uh, and clean up the surface to make it true to the in parallel. Parallel. We're almost there, but it didn't clean up fully. So we'll take off uh, 0.1 millimeter more. The reason it's not flat is because I JB welded it on. And the reason I JB welded it on was because it was warped and didn't seal. So now we're fixing things we should have fixed. Uh, but it was assembled when I glued this on. That's why I didn't do this. The whole surface has been machined, so now it's flat relative to the table and uh, thereby relative to the inside of the case house. Now we're gonna skim this surface to make that flat relative to the other surfaces. The cover is recessed 12.7 millimeters into this and we want say 0.9 millimeters of clearance, so 5.5 millimeter valve and then 0.4 millimeter clearance. We'll have to make this surface 13.6 millimeters from this surface. <laughs> Like playing a video game. Living on the road, my friend, it's gonna keep you free and clean. Now you wear your skin like iron and your breath's as hard as kerosene Weren't your mama's only son, but her favorite one it seems She began to cry when you said goodbye And sank into your dreams That's a weird uh, transition into a uh, Sponsored spot by NordVPN, our all-time longest time supporter of the channel. Thank you NordVPN. NordVPN keeps you safe on the internet by creating an encrypted tunnel for your data to travel in. So no one can spy on it and steal your data. So that's important. As you should know by now, there's lots of threats out there. And they also have stuff like NordPass, which uh, helps you keep your passwords uh, organized and secure. And also NordLocker, which is a safe uh, encrypted storage, uh, cloud storage. What I want to focus on and what I always focus on is how you can use NordVPN to access stuff that's not available to you where you're living or where you're traveling to. And I have a specific case and that's where that song comes in. It's a, that's Pancho and Lefty by a town's fan, Sam. There's a really nice performance of this song in a movie called Heartworm Highways. The problem is Heartworm Highways aren't available in, uh, in Europe, in Norway or in Europe, anywhere. I've tried all these streaming services and rent and buy services and uh, it's just not available. As you can see here, if I click one of them. Like Voodoo itself is not available in, uh, in Norway, probably not Europe either. But watch this. If I go into NordVPN and I... I know Voodoo is available in America, so I'll, I'll choose Chicago. So now Voodoo thinks I'm from Chicago. And I'll open an uh, incognito window just to be sure there's no cookies uh, or stuff from last time I visited the page. And uh, Heart from hi Highways. Voodoo. Et voila! Now I can uh, buy or rent the movie. I'll have to sign in. Create an account. But uh, now Voodoo thinks I'm in Chicago and everything works just fine. Perfect. There's a bunch of countries. Actually, there's like 5,000 plus servers to choose from all around the world. Which comes in handy not only for uh, watching movies that's not uh, that are not available in your area, but also for booking cheap plane tickets if you uh, if you pretend to be from a low cost country or playing games that's not the that are not available for you or uh, 
buying stuff that's not available. There's no end to the possibilities. Head to nordvpn.com slash stuffing and get a four month extra exclusive deal when you sign up. It's risk free thanks to their 30 day money back guarantee. Thank you NordVPN. I thought everything would be fine now, but uh, there's one thing I didn't do, which I will need to do. So the valve is, the cover is rocking when it's sitting like this. And it's perfectly fine sitting like this. And I realized that the thickness is consistent here now because this is what the mill was sitting against when uh, we machined this surface. And we're seeing 15 millimeters, 15.00, like 15 millimeters. But the thickness of this is inconsistent. Two millimeters here, 2.3 here. We'll have to set this up in the mill again and then skim this surface until this is parallel to this surface. But I'm running out of time because I need to get my car to... Uh, I have an appointment at uh, a workshop to get my uh, EU, EU approval, like... Uh, it's a two-year thing and uh, it's overdue so uh, if they pull me over now I'm uh, they'll take my plates which is uh, unfortunate so I don't want that to happen everything has been machined and now I'll have to take this surface down to be 12.7 from this surface Now everything should fit fine. No rocking. Quickly glue this onto here. Let that cure. See you tomorrow. I'm being taught a lesson in uh, how uh, thin aluminium behaves here because uh, this isn't, still isn't flat. Like this surface is, I think this surface is still uneven compared to this surface. This surface is parallel and flat in relation to, the, to this surface, but uh, because the problem is the thin. I really wish I wouldn't have made this so thin. Like, I did that because I didn't think it would need to be thick and it looks sleek that it's, uh, like sleek, slick, that it's thin and all, yeah, whatever. And the problem is I had it supported like this. So the parallels were under these surfaces, but not these. And uh, even though I took really light cuts, it's obvious that, or at least I think it's, that's what's happening. So maybe not obvious, but I think what's happening is that the end mill is pushing this material down while cutting. What's funny is I didn't feel that rocking yesterday. Let's see if this is uh, like acceptable rigidity. It just seems like a stupid idea. Zero five four zero five one zero six zero six one zero point one millimeter difference between here and here. Does that matter? There's enough clearance. I think this is good enough, and if we're having trouble, I'm making a completely new one. The problem is I haven't got more of this uh, super hard aluminium. Let's keep this in the back of our minds and continue on. To uh, hopefully keep coolant out of the bearing. So I'm gonna machine a recess here to accept the ignition trigger so that we can uh, run this uh, trigger wheel behind the uh, Drive pulley. I'm going to use this to plug the hole in the seal while machining. I forgot.
forgot that blanking plug. There's always something. Well, maybe there's not too much stuff in that bearing. We'll see. Probably there is. And we'll have to uh, replace, well, at least clean it really thoroughly. That's really annoying. And I forgot about that plug. <laughs> oh. I think we're fine. Pay attention to the blanking plug being present. There's such a huge mess everywhere. And I'm gonna, when finally something works, when the engine is running fine and that's when I'll, I'll clean up the place with a smile on my face that rhymes. So probably never. <laughs> Best practice would be to pull against the uh, inner race of the bearing. But this is not a really tight press fit and, uh, and that would mean I will have to take out the seal. Well, as you can see there's not much resistance here. Which means it probably will be fine. Like there's almost a slip fit. I'll be a little bit more generous this time, just to make sure there's, uh, and especially around the bolt holes, which I forgot last time. You've seen this assembly multiple times before, so I'll just, uh, I'll assemble and I'll bring it back when it's, uh, when it's done. That's top dead center. And now I want 3.17 millimeters before top dead center because that corresponds to 30 degrees. That's close enough. And with this 3D printed rotary valve uh, adjustment tool thing, which you've seen before in there, and the rotary valve in position, I know rotary valve timing is correct. So that's close enough to 3.17 millimeters. And the valve is aligned and now I'm going to give the, the driver a slight tap to seat it on the taper. Like that. And as we realized the impact wrench didn't really do much damage to the crank alignment it seemed. So I'm going to take my chance and use the impact driver again to 
to torque down this nut. That's uh, more than enough, I think. And now to see if uh, if it's sitting at the correct spot. That's in the correct spot. And this side will receive a couple of spacers and then the driver or the ignition trigger. But we'll have to grind off three of these lobes so that there's just one, like so. And now we'll use this again to set timing at 30 degrees before top dead center. And then align the end of the lobe with center as best as we can of the trigger. And uh, it'll probably not end up perfectly in the middle, and, uh, but we can uh, adjust in software and set the new base timing. Well, that's almost perfect. Almost perfect. So now ignition timing should sit at around 30 degrees. So that's the base timing for my Ignitec unit. To be able to pull the engine out of this cradle while it's uh, mounted in the frame, so I won't have to undo this really cumbersome bolts uh, each time, I need to cut clearance here so that it's possible to pull this almost straight up. But actually it's just this section that has to be cut off. This can be just brought down to this level. So I think I'll set this up in the middle and uh, so that we don't remove uh, too much of the stiffness. There's a big hole here which uh, would make, if I cut away all this, would make this weak. Well, I didn't press record. With Yoshi's help, I uh, manually removed the, well, this part, the curve here. So now I can pull it, pull the engine straight out of the cradle. And then it won't interfere with the frame in the bike and uh, will make things much easier next time we'll have to pull the engine. I started draining the fuel in uh, fear of uh, the oil having separated out and being spent already, like earlier. But uh, you can see from the color difference, so that's uh, Sonoco Supreme without any oil, and this is from the tank. And uh, I know this fuel and I know that's the color it gets when uh, it's properly mixed with the A747 oil. So uh, we're good. I'm dumping this back into the tank. First start, gearbox not connected. Make sure everything works as intended. Let's see how it behaves. Let's hook up the gearbox and uh, and see what happens.
it's running better than ever. We saw like seven horsepower and uh, we've seen like four earlier while doing those short uh, runs. Still getting really hot. The rope with valve side and this side and now I can feel play here. Like axial play is uh, supposed to be there but no radial play and there's a lot. Like relatively a lot. So you saw how much I had screwed up machining those uh, the rotary valve parts. I wonder if I've screwed up the alignment of the two case halves, even though they were machined with a with a mandrel in the bearing um, in place of the bearings to keep things uh, straight. But uh, I'm wondering if uh, if uh, past me uh, didn't do that properly, because. Uh, like, that would explain why the bearings are getting born so fast. Or maybe, like, crap from the mill. But uh, I did clean that bearing really thoroughly. We'll have to pull the engine and investigate. Like so many times before. Next time! So, fairly successful ending this time. And uh, we're getting somewhere. And uh, it seems like friction is... Um, is, is important, really important. You can't just uh, fix the friction stuff later on. Friction is really important. And uh, this will probably cause a lot of friction if the if things aren't aligned properly. Let's... Uh, so next time, tear it down and, uh, and check alignment and see if we can find out why it's getting so... Why the crank assembly with the rotary valve and all is getting so hot.